How did you instill that culture, and why do you think that's just the expectation of not only your team, but everybody that's a Utah youth? Fan? Well, first of all, we've had great support from this community. Uh, I'm sure most of these guys here are in the must. Mighty Utah student section, which I think is the best student section in the country. Uh, and then we just, you know, we got to protect this house mentality, and, and we take that very seriously. Yeah, and the culture of your team is one, like, uh, as soon as I get dropped into game day last year, incredibly honored. Anytime you heard Herbie or any of these big-time college football speak about your program, they're like, they take the identity of the coach. They're smothering on defense. They're going to ground and pound. They're going to be a disciplined team. And then all of a sudden we see... We see you show up on a damn Harley Davidson for this entire thing. When you hear that the team is taking your identity, do you agree with that sentiment? And what does that mean to you about your culture? You know, I think there's some truth to that. And I also think that, uh, you know, obviously the assistant coaches play a huge role in that. Uh, you know, the, the position guys taking on the identity of their position coach. Uh, it all starts in the weight room. We've got a fantastic strength staff that starts instilling that mental and physical toughness uh, identity that we have in the weight room. And so uh, I think it's a collaborative effort with the whole program. Before the boys have their questions for you, is this sports through here? I don't think I know the exact model. I have a street glide myself. I like to ride. Yeah. It's kind of my meditation. How long have you been riding? That, that's not actually mine. I borrowed that. Mine's in storage. Just put it in. I got an ultra limited CVO. Ooh. And uh, it's, a, it's a great bike, but that, that's a. Uh, Ripping bike as well. How, I assume the rides around here are glorious. Is that Incredible. like your yeah. getaway time? Yeah, or what do you do got, while you're riding? Uh, we've got, uh, you know, Zions Park down to the south. Uh, Jackson Hole right up north. We can go to Yellowstone. Ride your bike through Yellowstone. So a lot of good rides around here. Hey, this place is absurd, Coach. It is. That's why I've been here 20 years. Hell yeah. 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 AJ has a question for you, Coach. Coach, I know I don't want you to have to try to brag on yourself. We can brag for you, but you know how they say teams kind of take on the identity of their head coach, or, and they kind of we, we think of like Mike Vrabel, Tennessee Titans, how they're ground and pound, let's go be tough guys. Your teams always are respected as super physical teams that go out there and try to take games away from people. Is that something, do you have to talk about that, or is that built, that just kind of built in that you've already had that going? That's pretty ingrained in the program. That's in our culture. Uh, Steve can attest to that. He's, he was here as a you know, terrific player, obviously here, and, and really embodies that what we're all Steve. about. Yeah, I give Steve, Steve a hand. Hey, Ice up, Steve. Ice up. On the board. But, yeah, we have, uh, you know, that's been our identity for a lot of years. And, and when we have players come into our program, each recruiting class, it's you will become us. We won't become you. You're going to become us. Coach, there's a lot of hype that has been made uh, about the Pac-12 and about teams in the Pac-12. You guys are obviously back-to-back -back champions in the yeah. Rose Bowl doing incredible things. Not a lot of conversation about Utah football beginning of the season going into the season. How do you deal with that? Do you care about that type of thing? And why are you not talked about more? I mean, I just, you know what I mean? I, I, you're jocked, obviously. Yeah. You got a sleeveless on, wow. incredible sunglasses. Wow. You're maybe the most relatable human I've run into <laughs> in the coaching world. Why do you think that has kind of been the case? You know, I don't have a great answer for that, but I know we play on it pretty hard. We, we, uh, we love that. Uh, chip on our shoulder mentality and, and maybe not getting the uh, recognition that uh, our guys deserve. And so uh, we're used to it. And uh, like I said, we use it as motivation. Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Coach, I've heard that you're somewhat of a classic rock connoisseur. Not somewhat. Okay, so yeah, you, are absolutely. A, you are a big time. There is no music after 1985 that I can tell you anything about. It's okay. all pre-85. Uh, love that. So with that in mind, <laughs> What song or band do you think best emulates this year's team? Oh, man, that's a great question. Uh, I don't know who emulates the team, but I can tell you I love the Stones and Zeppelin. And, Hell yeah. And uh, Leonard Skinner and yeah, Grand what? Funk and the, the whole, you know, it goes on and on. But, but uh, this team has, uh, you know, got a great deal of toughness. Uh, we've had to use that next man up mentality, uh, you know, ever since game one. And to their credit, they've played that, uh, you know, to a T. And, and the guys that have had their opportunities to step up and fill in for guys that were missing have done a great job. Uh, let's talk about next man up. Pig farmer quarterback. <laughs> yeah. There was a uh, blow up pig here. And uh, the fans love this guy. How could you not? 5 0 as a starter for you. I think uh, first game thrown for multiple touchdowns was last week. He's only getting better, seemingly, and mm -hmm. nobody's really talking about it because a lot of the Cam Rising conversation has taken place all year. And we had Cam on. He is awesome. Yeah, Tell me is. about this pig farmer, though, and the mentality that it takes to step into the position that he has, especially for a quarterback that's as beloved as Cam Rising is. Right. Well, I'll tell you, Bryson Barnes is 
is getting better every week. Uh, you know, tough guy. He was a two-time state wrestling champ in high school. You love that. I love that. How, how many quarterbacks were two-time state champs in wrestling? I mean, that, that's incredible. Uh, he was also state champ in football twice, state champ in baseball. Why? Uh, he, Why? he did it all. He did it all down on the pig farm down there in Milford, Utah. And, and uh, you saw that run uh, in the last Late. drive against SC when he you know, dipped his shoulder on that safety. And that, that epitomizes who he is. I listened to you talk to Reese Davis about that. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, pig farmer. I heard uh, you talk to Reese Davis about that, and he said in the moment all you were thinking was, thank God we just got in the field goal range. What a kick to win that thing. Yeah. What a kick. That's a monster game, a monster win for you guys. And now in the college football world, unlike the NFL where it's just record-based, like to get to where you ultimately want to go, there's a lot of opinion-based decisions being made by a board, by a group behind the scenes. A win against USC the way it happened, obviously huge. Tomorrow against Oregon, what do you think your team proves to the people that ultimately in the end do the college football playoff thing? But what do you want these people to describe your team as whenever they watch? Well, first of all, Oregon's a heck of a football team. They got, uh, you know, yeah. they're balanced. There is no weakness. They're, com they're complete. Uh, so we got our hands, to, our, our um, work cut out for us. But, uh, you know, typically for us, if we win the line of scrimmage, that, that's a good sign for us. And that, that'll be the key tomorrow's game is winning the line of scrimmage and uh, taking care of the football. 80 straight sellouts here. Yeah. I think you've won 29 out of 30 here, 18 of the last 19. Don't want to just go through everything, but home field advantage is real. Why is that? Well, I think it starts with the must, the mighty Utah student section. <laughs> right there, they are uh, really, the atmosphere in Rice Eccles starts right there. Uh, we got uh, standing room only every week, like I said. Uh, the community is behind us, and uh, it's not the biggest stadium in the country, but it is one of the loudest, and it provides a huge, yeah. huge uh, advantage for the youths. The altitude. You guys training at it, other people not at it. I think that's a benefit as I well. I think it is as well, yeah, and we got uh, teams that come out up here, and in the second half, it starts to jump on their back a little bit. Yeah, I walked from the uh, shitter to here, <laughs> and I was <laughs> winning. <laughs> Connor has a question for you, Coach. Can you yeah. say that on this show? Yeah, oh, yeah. You can, yeah, okay. Yeah, let it eat, do whatever you can. You should have heard what David said. You should have heard what David said. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's been long, Coach. Yeah. I've, been in me I've been in meetings all morning, so I don't know what's been going on. Hey, here. we appreciate that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Always getting better. Connor has uh, a question. Yeah, Coach, I mean, watching you right in here, I, I, I know I'd take a fucking bullet for you. Just right <laughs> now, I'm sure your team is the same way. Uh, Pre-game, you're talking to your guys. When you're giving kind of a speech, are you making it personal? Do you hear kind of the outside noise that teams do to kind of use as bulletin board material? And are you going all the way back to like 1776, founding fathers, <laughs> why America's America? And what are you saying to your team? You know, uh, we try to block all the outside noise out. Um, you know, it's really about us and playing hard, playing smart, uh, passion and energy, playing the full 60. You know, just the things that it takes to win football games week in and week out. It doesn't vary much. You know, there's, a, there's certain things you got to have uh, in your football team instilled. And uh, if you can uh, get that each week, then you got a great chance to win. What song are you listening to right before the game starts or you're giving your speech? Angry, Rolling Stones, brand new. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we great, have routine? great album. We have a playlist? We have a full, we have a routine before every game? No, no, no routine, but uh, that's what I was listening to on the way over here. You house coffee? What do you, uh, what's your every, you seem to have so much juice, like so much energy. <laughs> you the coffee drinker? What are we doing? No caffeine, just natural, natural juice. Wow. Okay, so what was this 4,000 days of working out thing that Pete Thamel sent me right Yeah, I, I, I try to downplay that, but uh, it was uh, July of 2000, or excuse me, end of June 2008. I had missed a couple workouts. I felt crappy, like, what, what am I doing? What, you know, get off your butt, you know, get, get going. And so on July 1st, 2008, I said, I'm going to see how long I can go working out without missing. And since that, till now, it's intact. And Every so, single day? No Sunday, Monday through Saturday, well, six hey, days a week. Hey, the Lord yeah, said that's Sunday. That's <laughs> you know, it's good enough for you. Yeah. It's good enough for the Lord. Hey, you look good. It's paying off. You Thank diet? You're a super dieting guy. We eat a lot no, of. No, I don't. I don't. I just don't try to eat not too much. That's that's all. I love it. Coach uh, Steve Smith has a question for you. Obviously. All right, Stephen. I, I know Senior. Coach. I don't, I don't. Steve Senior. What do you got? Hey, his name is Steve Senior. By I the know way, it is. we asked him why it wasn't the first. <laughs> You know what I mean, Coach? Like Steve Smith the first, Steve Smith the second, yeah. mm -hmm. Steve Smith the third. You got well, nothing for Coach. Yeah. Well, I, actually, I do now. Okay, I like that. So, Coach, you, you know Pac-12, playing USC, playing Oregon, all of this stuff. What do you see for the University of Utah today moving forward as you transition to try to 
take down Pac-12 and then moving on to the Big 12? Yeah, well, right now we're in the gauntlet of our schedule. You know, started with SC, and then we got, uh, obviously, Oregon tomorrow, and it just, you know, it stays tough week in and week out. So, so you got to be ready every single week to bring your A game, and that's the, that's the first uh, priority right now and the task at hand. Uh, we're excited about uh, being able to land in the, in the Big 12 and, and uh, start a new chapter, I guess you could say, in Utah football. But uh, right now it's all about Oregon and this game tomorrow and, and trying to uh, keep on you know, winning those championships. It's all about Oregon. It's all about Oregon. Right. Yep. Right. Tell me about BYU. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell us about tell us about BYU, folks. Let, let's stick let's stick to the youth. Let's just stick to the youth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was the one earlier. Yeah, that was the one earlier. Uh, coach, I want to let you know this state is beautiful. It's shown up for us in a massive way. Your fans have been so in yeah. incredible. Tomorrow morning is going to be awesome with game day, and we can't wait to watch your team the rest of the way. Coach. Oh, I appreciate you. You appreciate are the man. Me. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen, that. how many years? 18? 19? 19. 19 years. Hey, that's not normal, right? That's very, that's very abnormal. That's an anomaly this day and age, and I feel very blessed and fortunate to be here. And do you think it's because of your relationship with the university, because of the success? Why do you think you've been able to maintain so much consistency? As Recruiting. The... Good players. We've had a ton of good players come through this program, like Steve He's a hell right of a here. Coach, too. That's what it's all about. Yeah, and also... He's a hell of a coach, though. Well, appreciate that. Steve. It's, it's true. <laughs> hey, Steve. I tried to get him into coaching. He's just not quite ready yet. Yeah, all he does is watch film right now. That's literally all. He's waiting to get well, back in. He offered me the job, the opportunity to interview last year at wide receivers coach, and uh, I like I like Charlotte right now. Yeah, you like Utah though. <laughs> yeah. You donated money here, uh, obviously. Like, it's not about the money. It's the it's the full on. I know what Coach Whittingham is expecting, and I need that. And he wants that commitment. And right now, I don't have the bandwidth to fully give him that commitment that he's desiring. Okay, so let's talk about coaching. Are you doing this till the day you die? No, not doing it till the day I die. No, I'm a year-to-year -year guy right now. Uh, as long as I, as soon as I run out of passion and energy, it'll be time to step down. I've got more passion and energy right now than I've had in 19 years. So I'm, I'm Ladies and gentlemen, head coach of the Utah Utes football team, Coach Kyle Whittingham. Yeah.